गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरुर्साक्षात्ब्रह्म तस्म श्रीगुरव नम गुरव सर्वोकाषे भवरोगिण निधे सर्विद्या दक्षिणामूर्त नम हरि ओं श्री गुरुभ्यो नमः हरि ओ भद्रम कर्णे विश्रुणुयाम देवा भद्रम पश्येमाजत्रा स्थिंग सुष्टुवागम सस्तनु व्यशेम देवित यदायु स्वस्ति न इंद्रो वृद्धश्रवा स्वस्ति नूषा विश्व स्वस्ति नाक्षो अरिष्टने स्वस्ति नो बृहस्पतिर्दा शाति 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 हरि ओ So in last week's discussion, we looked at Maya. What the master says is, this worldly appearance is just that an appearance. Why is that which is illusory appear to us as if it is very real? He says that is because of a phenomenon called Maya. The white light passes through a prism and appears as seven colors. You take the prism away, the seven colors disappear, but the white light remains. Similarly, when existence is perceived through the prism of the mind, the non-dual self appears as the diversity of creation. You take the mind away, as it happens in samadhi or in deep sleep. that creation also disappears so it is something which happens only through the prism of the mind and how does this happen how does maya succeed in deceiving our intelligence through the gunas maya has two powers one is called the power of projection called vikshepa other is the power of veiling or our and our avritti the power of vikshepa belongs to the rajoguna rajoguna is dynamism projection means showing something as something else showing the rope as a snake is projection how does this happen when there is no clarity in your vision then you assume the rope as a snake and the, for that reason what happens why does this clarity in the vision is lost is because of tamoguna the tamas veils the reality so it becomes blurred for you and in those dusky conditions the rajas comes forward and projects that which is unreal as reality you are unable to perceive the self so you perceive what you can which is the body and the mind and take it as real and when you are under the influence of these two gunas rajas and tamas rajas brings about lust anger greed jealousy arrogance ambition possessiveness all these things come out of rajas and what does tamas bring laziness delusion pramada sleepiness inertia doubt procrastination all these are tamasic qualities tamas is where the energy is very low 
Rajas is where the energy is not organized, haphazard, running in all directions. And then there is Sattva. Sattva is unaffected by Maya. And it is in Sattva that the self can be reflected. Sattva is like a lake in which the ripples have settled down. A still lake in which the self can be clearly reflected. The purpose of sadhana is to decrease the rajas and tamas to a very small quantity so that our existence is dominated by sattva. And when the sattva dominates, the intellect has clarity and in that clear intellect is able to grasp this truth that I am the witness, I am beyond this body, I am separate to this mind. And when that happens, freedom is happening. Beyond the gunas is the causal body. The causal body is one which is you experience a state of deep sleep. It is the seed of the other states, the body and the mind. In deep sleep, you are neither aware of your body nor there is anything happening in your mind. But as you slowly start waking up, as the mind wakes up, the body also wakes up and so does the outside world. And the witness of the self is beyond even this causal body or the deep sleep body. The wakeful state is associated with the physical body, the dreaming state with the subtle body and the deep sleep with the causal body. The same thing has been described as the pancha koshas, the five sheets. The physical body is called as the annamaya kosha. That aspect of our existence which is born out of food is sustained by food and becomes the food at some point to something else. The subtle body includes three sheets, the pranamaya, manomaya and vijnanamaya. The pranamaya kosha is that which energizes the body. The manomaya is the mind which perceives the processor of the information. And then we have the vijnanamaya, the intellect which discriminates, which judges, which decides and beyond that is the causal body. That in which the gross and the subtle body are hidden and the causal body represents the Ananda Maya Kosha. The joy which is beyond the senses that you experience in Samadhi and in deep sleep is in the Ananda Maya Kosha. And the self is witnessing all this. It's even beyond the Ananda Maya Kosha. It is just witnessing all this happening. And the master says, from the physical body or from, you can take even outside, from the external objects of the world, the sense objects, until the causal body is anatma. Why? Because all this is undergoing some sort of a change. All this has got phases. But the only thing which is eternal, unchanging, untouched, is the witness. After saying what is Anatma, now the master proceeds to say, now let me enunciate to you what is Atma. Adhate sampravakshyami svarupam paramatmanaha Yadvijnaya naro bandhan muktaha kaivalya mashnute. Athate sampravakshyami. Now I will enunciate to you the real essence of what you are, what you call divine, your true nature. Yadvijnaya naraha bandhan muktaha. By knowing this, you will become free from the bondage that you are experiencing. And you will attain liberation. Kaivalyam. Freedom is this sense of separation from the body and mind. Kaivalyam is the sense of oneness with the self. Kevalam. Kevalam means just. Kaivalyam means just me. Just I am. 
without adding anything beyond the I am, I am, I exist. That is Kaivalyam, just me. I pervade everything. It is just me, the witness. Asti kaschit swayam nityamaham pratyayalambanaha avasthatraya sakshi sanpanchakosha vilakshanaha Asti kaschit there is something, Swayam Nityam, that which is eternal, Aham Pratyaya Lambana, that which supports the notion of I am. You know, you may have doubt about the existence of God, but you don't have any doubt about your own existence, is it? You know, I exist. That is very concrete experience for you. And what is it that supports this notion that, yes, I am, I am. He says, there is something which is eternally present in you and that which supports this sense of, I am. Avastha traya sakshi san pancha kosha vilakshanaha. It is separate to the five koshas, the five sheets or the three bodies and which is the witness of all the three states, the waking, dreaming and the Deep sleep state. Yo vijanati sakalam jagrat swapna su shukti shu buddhi tad vritti sadbhavam abhava mahamityayam. And what is this something? Yo vijanati sakalam, that which knows everything, the all knowing. Jagrat Swapna Sushuptishu, all that is happening in the wakeful state, deep sleep state and the dreaming state, that which knows it all. Buddhi Tad Vritti Sad Bhavam Abhavam, that which realizes this also, that which expresses itself as this intellect which says, oh I know this, I don't know this, I understand this, I don't understand this. The presence or absence of the awareness in the mind in the intellect. That which knows that also, that which is aware and that becomes aware that, oh, I was not aware. Bhavam abhavam, sad bhavam sad abhavam. That which is truth, that which is untruth, that which is aware of the discriminating quality, that is the self. Na pasyati swayam sarvam yam na pasyati kaschana yasche yati buddhyadim na tu yam chetayatyayam That which witnesses everything but that which cannot be witnessed. See, the subject and the object. The subject is separate from the object. The subject is can see the object, but the object cannot see the subject. Like, I'm looking at you, or I'm looking at this device in which you are all hidden, but the device is not looking at me. I am aware of this device, the device is not aware of me, it is just in front of me. So the self feeds everything, the self is aware of everything, but not everything is aware of the self. The self sees everything, but nothing sees the self. Similarly, the self feeds everything, but nothing is needed for the self. The sun illuminates everything, but it does not need to be illuminated by something else. The sun is self-luminous. And in its self-luminosity, it illuminates the moon, it illuminates all the objects in the universe. So that which witnesses everything, and that which cannot be witnessed, and that, yes, chetayati, that which illuminates buddhyadi, all the faculties of our existence and which does not need to be illuminated, that is it. Yena vishwamidam vyaptam 
That which pervades everything, that which cannot be pervaded by anything else. And that which is in the form of illumination, that which is abha rupam, that which is like the light which illuminates everything and under whose illumination everything is revealed. See, during the night time, when there is no external light and if you switched off all the light in your room or in your house, you don't see anything. Even the things which are in front of you, you don't see. Sometimes you may not be able to see your own body. But when the light is switched on, everything is revealed. There is no relationship between the light and the objects in the room. But in the presence of the light, everything reveals. That is the nature of the light. The self by its very nature of luminosity illuminates and reveals everything. Yes, yes, Anidhi Matrena Dehendriya Manodhiya Vishayeshu Svakiyeshu Vartante Preritaiva Just in its presence, all the faculties start functioning as if they have been ordered, as if they have been inspired, as if they have been compelled to work. Say, for example, you got a fan in your house. Okay, what runs the fan is the motor in it. The motor decides how fast the fan should run, which direction it should run, all those things. But motor is not enough. You need electricity to power the motor. So when the electricity flows through the motor, the motor gets this ability to run the fan, to move the fan. Fan by itself is inert. Motor by itself has only got a little inert and internal energy. But the all energy is derived from the electricity. Just the presence of electricity makes the motor work and the fan run. Similarly, just Sanniti Matrayana in this, in the presence of the self, in the presence of Brahman, Dehendriya Manodhiya, all the faculties, they start working as if inspired, as if ordered, as if impelled to do what they have to do. Now, one thing you need to remember, the electricity is not doing anything here. It is just appearing, that's all. Just in its presence, all it's happening. Similarly, the self is not engaging in any action. In the presence of the self, the mind gets momentum. And with that momentum, it triggers actions in the body. Are you getting what I'm saying? So everything that is happening is happening on the level of the body and the mind. That is why the impressions also are limited to the body and the mind only. You do something good for somebody, you get punya or good merit, that will not touch your Atman. That is only at the level of the body and the mind. At the level of the body and the mind, you will experience the good consequences of it. Some Sukha you will experience. The Sukha and Dukkha also stop at the body and the mind because the impressions stop there. Because that which acts should experience the consequences. The action is happening from the body and the mind. The consequences are also experienced by the body and the mind. The self in both occasions just stays as a witness. But in its presence, this entire drama unfolds. Yes, yes, sanni de matrena. In its, just in its presence, everything is revealed. Yeshuntaratma purusha purano Niratara khanda sukhano bhoti Sadaika rupa pratibhoda matro Yene shita vagasavas charanti This self, where is it? It is not hanging somewhere outside you. It is the very core of your existence. The core of an atom is the nucleus. That is why atom and Atman have come from the same root word. The nucleus of existence is your Atman. It is you, Antaratma. Now you are sitting. What is it that is listening to this? What is it which is making sense out of what you are listening? What is it that is understanding? 
What is it that is making your heart beat? What is it that is making the breath move in and out? What is it that is digesting the food? That intelligence in your very core is that Atma. Yesha Antaratma Purusha Purano. It is ancient. Nirantara. It is eternal. Akhanda Sukhanu Bhotihi. Akhanda means immense. It also means indivisible. You can't break it into parts. Sukhanu Bhotihi. Always soaked in bliss. Sadaika Rupaha Pradipoda Matro Ene Shita Vada Savascharanti. Sadaika Rupaha means it's always one. There is no two in it. You can't say this is white electricity and green electricity. There may be white and red and green and yellow wires in the electricity, but the electricity is just one. So it says Sadaika Rupa is always one. It has never been two or more. And in its presence, Pratibodha, it inspires or impels Vagas, Vagas Avascharanti, the prana to move, the speech to happen. You know, a similar shloka is there in the uh, Keno Upanishad. It says, that which impels the thought to arise, that which impels the speech to happen, that which impels, what is it? It is the mind of the mind, the speech of the speech, the prana of the prana, the eyes of the eyes. That is what he is saying here. Atraiva sattva atmanidhi guhayama vyakrita kasha ushat prakasha akasha uchai ravivat prakasha te swadeja sa vishwamidam prakasha yanna. Where does this? Where does this Atman hide? It says it hides in the deep recess of your heart. Deep dark corner of your heart. Why do they call it deep dark corner? It is subtle. Anything that is beyond your sensory perception is dark for you, isn't it? The infrared light is something which you can't see. What you can't see is invisible for you, is darkness for you. It is in the deep dark cave of your existence. Beyond the perception of your senses. You know it is there, but you can't see it. But you have the sense of I am. Avyakritaka. In an inexpressible sky, it is shining like the bright sun. You know it is there, but you can't express it, you can't explain it, you can't see it. Just like in the sky, the bright sun shines and illuminates everything in this material world. Similarly, in the inner sky, the self shines and in its shine, everything is revealed. Jnata mano hankruti vikriyanam Dehendriya pranakrita kriyanam Ayo agni vatta nanu vartamano Najeshtate no vikaro Nata Mano Hankriti Vikriyanam That which is aware of the mind and its modifications. That which makes that, that is responsible for the dynamism in the prana and in the body. So it is responsible for the modifications. It is responsible for the actions. But see the last sentence. Na cheshtate na vikroti. But it does not undergo any modification. It does not engage in any action. How he gives an example. Just like in contact with the fire, the iron ball becomes red hot. It appears like a ball of fire. And from this ball of fire, the red hot iron, can you separate the fire? Just like you cannot separate the fire from the iron, you cannot separate the self from everything. It appears as if it is engaged in all the actions. But it is not doing anything. Na jayate it is neither born nor does it die nor does it grow nor does it shrink or decay 
and nor does it undergo any modifications. Even when the body which undergoes all this disappears, it stays. Viliyamane api. Even when this body dissolves and disappears, the self it does not dissolve or disappear. It stays. How? When you break a pot, what happens to the space in the, in the pot? Does the space break? The space was there even before you made the pot. Even after you break the pot, that space stays there. Do you see this? So just like the space is unaffected by the breaking of the pot, by the death of this body, the spirit in it is unaffected. It stays eternally. Prakriti vikriti bhinnaha Shuddha bodha svabhavaha Sada sadida mashesham Bhasayan nirvisesha Vilasati paramatma Jagradadishvavastha Swaha mahamiti saksha Sakshi rupena buddhe Prakriti, Vikriti, Vibhinna. Prakriti is the manifested world. The manifested world has many modifications. So it is separate to this manifested material world. Shuddha, Bhoda, Swabhava. It is all-knowing and pure. Sat, Asad, Ima, Ashesham. Bhasayan, Nirvisheshaha. It is beyond the manifest and the unmanifest. Sat and Asad, between be, it is beyond the gross and the subtle. Bhasaya Nirvishesha. Nirvishesha means it has got no special attribute, it is attributeless. You know, the universal causal body is called Ishvara. That is why for God you have attributes. Oh, all knowing, compassionate, caring, loving, all these things. But it is even beyond that, so it has got no attributes also. Nirvisheshaha, no attributes. And such a self, Vilasati Paramatma, Jagradadishu Avastha. In all the three states, this divine reigns and stays. How? Swa Ahamiti Sakshat Sakshi Rupena Buddhehe. It stays in your intellect as the pure witness with a sense of I am. Swa Swayam Aham. Swa Aham. I am. In the sense of I am, it stays awake in the intellect through all these states of existence. Niyamita manasa muntvam swamatmana matmani ayam ahamiti sakshat vidhi buddhi prasadat jani marana taranga it is okay I understand what is all happening but how do I realize this how do I experience how do you become aware of this I have heard this many many times so many quotes how do you say to first of all to grasp what I am telling you your faculty should be clean your antakaranas the mind, memory, ego, and intellect should be purified. What is the impurity in them? Just your impressions. It is the impressions which are like, it is like uh, the dust on a mirror or you're wearing a glass, it's all, it's not wiped clean. That is, once you wipe it clean, you see things better. The impressions are the mala in your antakaranas. With the impure antakarana, you won't be able to understand what I am saying and definitely won't be able to realize what is self. For that, you need to clean your slate inside. And that is sadhana. Sadhana is the process of releasing the impressions and the easiest, the quickest and the most effective way is through meditation. Erasing the impressions. And he says, only through Atma Samyama, you will be able to Purify the faculties. When the faculties are purified, you gain the ability to perceive the knowledge and in that ability, grace dawns upon you. Buddhi prasada, sakshat viddi buddhi prasada. 
you will only be able to experience that i am the witness with the help of grace now does this mean the grace was not there when i do sadhana grace will come into me no no grace has always been there but you get the ability to experience that when the faculties are pure because there is some certain amount of energy is essential to appreciate and sustain that grace you know if we have to listen you see a light which is beyond your visual spectrum you have to use some infrared glasses then you'll be able to see what you can't see with your normal eyes yeah similarly you need certain level of refinement of your faculties only then you can experience the grace which is anyway flowing the impressions are like the stone which is covering the fountain you remove the stone the fountain has always been there but you have covered it with a stone and you are telling there is no fountain here no the fountain of joy has ever been within you you have just covered it all with your impressions remove those impressions and then you see the bubbling fountain coming up jana marana taranga para samsara sindum pratara bhavakrutartho brahma rupena samstaha only then only when you realize the proximity of yourself you will be able to stay established in the self and only by being established in the self you will be able to cross over this ocean of samsara which has countless waves of birth and death janana marana taranga apara enormous endless waves of birth and death come and keep hitting you why because of ignorance you will stay stuck at the body and the mind see the self is untouched and unacting it is unengaging when it is not engaging it can't be bound by any impressions but what is bound by impressions is that what acts which is the body and the mind when you keep on identifying yourself with the body and the mind and keep on generating more and more impressions then you have to keep coming back again and again to clear those impressions either good or bad only by reposing in the self you rise above the impressions only then you will not have to come back atranatmanyahamiti matir bandha esho अत्र अनात्मा अहम इति मतिर्बंधः व्हाट इज द सोर्स ऑफ बॉन्डेज आइडेंटिफाइंग विद द अनात्मा एज योर सेल्फ थिंकिंग द अनरियल एज मी एंड होल्डिंग ऑन टू दिस नोशन इज द सोर्स ऑफ योर बॉन्डेज एंड हाउ डज दिस हैपन थ्रू अज्ञाना and when ignorance is within you and you identify yourself as the body and the mind then you experience what you experience janana marana klesha birth death and suffering all you will experience at the moment you identify yourself with the body and the mind and how is this notion entertained this notion comes out of ignorance how does this notion get entertained by the repeated sensory experiences you engage with the world it feels real you see look i love coffee i drink coffee i get pleasure so it must be real you get through all different pleasures and experiences and say look this is all happening how can this be unreal this is real if i don't drink coffee i suffer if i drink i get joy so it must all be real with every pleasure this notion that i am the body and the mind gets more and more stronger so it is this notion of me in the body and the mind is strengthened by the repeated sensory experiences and what happens it gives a very beautiful example just like the silk worm slowly takes a small thread and binds a whole cocoon around itself similarly you get entrapped in your own notion that i am my body and mind and you're stuck in that आता 
This notion originates from the dominance of tamas in your existence. Vimudasya tamasa, the immaturity of the intellect is because it is covered by tamas, it is soaked in tamas. And because of that, you take the anatma as atman. Viveka bhavat, because there is no discrimination, viveka in your intellect, you mistake a rope for a snake and are firmly convinced that it is a snake. It is not just mistaking, you don't even want to inquire, you are convinced that it is snake. And then react to it as if it is a snake. Tata anartha vrato adhikaha. And if you go like this, what happens? You will end up in a big disaster. Anartha adhikaha. Nipatati. You suffer a great disaster if you go in this direction along this route. Yo asad graha sahi bhavati bandaha. Asad graha, asad graha, graha means grasping. Asad is the untruth, the unreal. By holding on tightly to the body and the mind as your true nature, you get stuck in the bondage. The main reason for the bondage is identifying with the unreal. Why do you identify with the unreal? Is because of the ignorance. What is the source of ignorance? It is the tamas. And the abhava, viveka. In the in the presence of tamas, there is no viveka and because there is no viveka, you mistake a rope for a snake, the spirit for the body and the mind and then hold on to it tightly and then get bound. Akhanda nitya dvaya bodha shakya And he says, I have explained the self as indivisible, eternal, non-dual, all-knowing, all-illuminous, all-bright. How can this ignorance called tamas cover it? If you say, whether is God is powerful or the tamas is powerful, God should be power, should be able to overcome tamas. How come the tamas is covering the divinity? How come I am not able to? He says, yes, it happens. Just like during an eclipse, the sun is being eclipsed by something. Here it says Rahu, just like the Rahu eclipse swallows the sun during an eclipse. Similarly, the ignorance can swallow your intellect, the, the discrimination power. When that is discriminated, everything appears dark to you. So the Avruti Shakti, the wailing power of the Maya is so strong, just like Rahu swallows the sun and causes an eclipse. It will swallow your discrimination and make you sustain the ignorance. Tiro bhute svatmanya malatara tejo vati pumane anatmanam adamiti shariram kalayati tataka makrodha prabhriti bhiram bandhana gunai. Vyathayati is suffers. Why does man suffer? Because of the avruti power, the tamas. It covers the reality and when it covers the reality, the rajas becomes dominant and it projects the unreal as real and you hold on to the unreal. When you hold on to the unreal, what happens? The qualities of rajas and tamas dominate in your life. What are they? Lust, greed, anger, jealousy, delusion, doubt, suspicion, not having any trust, delusions. All these things 
overtake you, sweep you, and then you result in what? Suffering. Urushaktir vyatayati. These two powers are so strong, the vikshepa and avarana, when you get under the influence, they bring about endless misery to you. And this is very simple. If you think about all your problems, all that you are worried about, all that you are afraid about, it limits to the body and mind, isn't it? Just think about it. It may be to this body or the other body. All your anxiety, worries and desires also are limited to this body and mind only. And that is where in the body is tamasic and the mind is rajasic. It is these two qualities which are driving your life into misery. The clouds are formed from the sun only, from the rays of the sun. But do not they, does it not cloud the sun and make the sun disappear? Similarly, the ego is sourced from the self. But the ego when it becomes stronger, it clouds the self and makes you feel that the relationship of the body and mind is real. Tirodhaya vijrumbate svayam. Tirodhaya means it hides the self and vijrumbate, it shines as if it is the boss. She is summarizing saying that all the problem we are having is because we are unable to overcome these two powers of Maya, which is Vikshepa and Avarana. Under their influence, the human being considers the body and mind as his true nature and then suffers endlessly. So the main source of this strong association with the Anatma is ignorance. And this ignorance is beginningless. There was no time when Maya was not there. As long as Brahman is there, Maya was there, the power of Brahman at the same time. It is Anadi. But he says it appears as if it has got no end also. Looking at the nature of people who are not interested in the spirituality, are not sincerely going then it appears as if it is unending also. And if it becomes unending, then what happens? Janma pyaya vyadi jaradi dukkha pravaha patam. Birth, death, disease, suffering. You will be swept away in a flood of all these things when you don't make the effort to rise above this maya. And how do you cut through this Maya? Na astrena na shastrena na vahrina. You can't burn it with fire. You can't cut it through weapons. The only thing you can cut it through is through Viveka. Viveka Vignana Mahasana. A, a, big, a, a great sword called as Viveka only can cut through this. And how do you attain Viveka? Dhatu Prasadena. Through the grace which is a consequence of purified faculties. Shruti Pramanai Kamate Swadharma Nishthata Vaivatma Vishuddhirasya Vishuddha Buddha Paramatma Vedanam Tenaiva Samsara Samulanashaha 
that you should have vishuddha buddhi that's a purified mature intellect only can grasp this knowledge of the self and once this knowledge is grasped is becomes a reality for you samsara samula nashah this samsara this appearance of duality will be taken away from its root like somebody asked an enlightened person i mean how do you see this world you know i see people things everything how do you see this and the example they gave was uh, you know there are some days when you can look up at the sky and you can see the sun and you can see the moon also lightly somewhere yeah and he says for me the self is like the sun and the world appears like the moon very faintly when i want to look at it if i don't put attention i see only the sun i see only energy here so in another such some guruji somebody has guruji same question how do you see us all? how do we appear to you and he said you all appear like balloons some balloons are energetic and flying high some balloons are all lost air and they are fly, lying flat on the ground some are jumping up and down some are going this way that way so somebody was asking how do you know that this person is fit for this job how do you give assign roles to people he says i know how much energy is needed for a particular task all i look at how much energy you have got and i put you there i don't need to know how much talented you are what skills you have got how much education you have got all i need to know is how much energy you are carrying and that i can see when i can see then i say you can do this and that's why i put you there so that's what here he is saying shruti pramana hi the, the scriptures have already told you this again and again swadharma nishta that when you do sadhana sincerely when you listen to the master then your faculties get purified and this vishuddha buddhe this purified intellect is able to hold on to the reflection of the self and once you are able to hold on to the reflection of the self not just a few moments of meditation not in a few seconds of kriya just you can sustain that then samsara samula nashah the samsara is removed from its root and then you will see the world only when you want to see it when you don't want to see it you are able to just leave it out says it is the duty of a seeker it's the duty of the one who is wise to seek to enquire into the nature of the self and to find out the difference between atma and anatma you need to develop you need to be interested in this getting this ability to discriminate between the real and the unreal tena eva anandi bhavati only then you'll be able to experience true happiness in the life which is satchidanandam the existence of the pure consciousness as truth knowledge and bliss you will experience in reality only when you make this effort to enquire into your true nature and get this ability to discriminate between the real and the unreal this is what krishna also says isn't it in that gita he says what is true knowledge is that which helps you discriminate between the subject and the object ಕ್ಷೇತ್ರ ಕ್ಷೇತ್ರಜ್ಞ ವಿಭಾಗ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಏಬಲ್ ಟು ಡೂ ದಿಸ್ ಡಿಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಕ್ಷೇತ್ರ ಅಂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಕ್ಷೇತ್ರಜ್ಞ ಓನ್ಲಿ ದಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ಸ್ ಯು ಡೂ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಟ್ರೂ ನಾಲೆಡ್ಜ್ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಎಲ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ this is what we've been doing in our practices in our meditation here is gives the proper technique he says see when you bring some greens to your house what do you do you separate the leaves from the stalk and throw away the stalk and use the leaves to cook isn't it he says similarly 
when you know how to separate the self from the non-self and keep the non-self away and stay with the self, only then you will be able to attain liberation. Tadatmana tishtati yahasa muktaha. One who is able to repose in the self is the one who has developed this ability to separate the spirit from the body and the mind and stay in the company of the spirit in a sustained way. Think that much should be enough, yeah. But until here in this hundred and fifty three shlokas, he has told almost all that we need to know at this stage. You know, he first said how privileged we are to have this body and mind, how privileged we have to have this master, and how privileged we are to have this desire for freedom. Then he spoke about yes, just desire is not enough. You need to be qualified. You got the desire now. Work hard. Towards the qualifications. After the qualifications were there, he said, "Now I will tell you. Now you are qualified. I will tell you what is Atma and Anatma. I will tell you what is the source of your bondage." And he first reassured the disciples, "Said, don't worry. There is a way out of this suffering. I can see that you are in anguish. I will tell you the reality of this. When you know the reality of it, you'll be able to separate out, tease out the Atma from the Anatman." And then not give too much importance to the anatman. Let it be there. Spend as little time as possible in the realm of anatma, the body and the mind, to fulfill your karmic obligations. And the rest of the time, stay focused on the self. And by doing that, you'll be able to be free. And he gave so many reasons. Said why you are not able to hold on to the self because it is covered by tamas. And when it's covered by tamas. The rajas projects the body and mind because that is the only thing that is available now. The spirit is not seen. The body and mind is seen. The spirit is untouched. The body and mind is touched by your experiences. So you hold on, saying, thinking this must be real. So this is just a notion in you that this must be real. Just like in the dream, you think this all must be real until you wake up. So until this knowledge dawns, it is but natural for you to think the unreal as the real. But no, the longer you hold on to the unreal, the more suffering you are going to go through. So learn this: how to separate. How will you learn to separate the real from the unreal? Now you know what is real, what is unreal. How do you make it reality? Do sadhana. Through sadhana, remove the impressions. The impressions are the one which impel you to act in the world. The impressions are the one which tell you that the joy is out there. So you run behind them. As the impressions gets cleared, then that craving drops. Has this not happened to some of you in some areas at least? This is called asat nevrati. Remember, before all this happened, before we did any sadhana, how you were. Sometimes a cup of coffee is not available. You would shake as if your life depends on it. Now you are able to pass it on, isn't it? Many people, you know, you look at your friends, people around you who don't do any sadhana. How the small, small things can throw them away. But now you see, you are a lot more steady. Asat nevrati means you are not interested that much. You know, there's a beautiful story in, uh, in Adi Shankar's life. Uh, he comes to his Mandala Mishra's house and they offer him food. And on that day, there is a big feast that has been arranged because it is uh, his father's ceremony. He has made sort of varieties of food. And he asks Adi Shankar, "What should I feed you? What should we give you?" And he says, "Some rice, some dal, some salt, some pepper, some ghee." And if you look at it, this is all you need for survival. You don't need anything else outside this. There is carbohydrate, there is protein, there is fat, and there is some taste and salt. See, this is all you need. All that I need: pickle, I need chips, I need mixture. I need all this is what is for your tongue, not for your body. <laughs> One who sees body as just an instrument to move through the karmas, for him it is, he takes only that which need to keep it alive. That's all. And remember, it's not only that, because he was walking so much, was traveling so much in North India and all. The moon, the dal has a cooling effect on you. It is healthy as well. No chilies, no spices. Do you see? So when you are able to separate yourself from the body, then 
the craving that the body generates in you will also come down. It does not mean you become averse to anything, but you are not interested in anything. And you know very well that if I take anything more than this just for my tongue, then the rajas will kick in, then the tamas will kick in, then I know where it will all take me. So better to be awake and alert and what I need, I will take. Yes, somewhere I go, somebody offers a feast. Yes, that day I am happy. I am not going to say no. But I am not going to go behind it. Do you see? Because one, you know that it is not needed. Two, there is no craving. Three, you need that if you indulge, then it only, it becomes an endless cycle. Look at all your cravings. How did they originate? Your cravings are only for those which you have experienced, isn't it? A child, when it is born, for the first year or so, they don't even give it any sweet to eat. The childhood is so bland, you put it in your mouth, you will spit it out immediately. No taste, no sweet, no salt, nothing. Child merrily eats and drinks that for a whole year. The day you put taste sugar in its mouth, its entire food habits change. From that day, the child says, I want this, I don't want this. It starts, all its nakra starts after that. Isn't it? So, only through the experience, the contact of the sense with the sense object, the craving comes. The identification comes. My joy is there. Oh, I missed it all these days. Now I want it. And when you have it, I don't want to let go of it. it. I don't want it to end. But you know that all these joys are transitory. And you not wanting it to end itself is a misery for you. You indulge in it, you run behind it, you put your effort, you take it, it gives a little joy and then disappears. Then you have to run again, you have to run again. And we do this life after life, life after life. Do you see this? And this Viveka in me, that is Anatma. This is Atma. If I give importance to Anatma, I will end up giving more time and attention to it. It's better I don't do that. Let me give attention to myself. And here, and you will see very quickly, you will get used to it. You just 20 days, 30 days, you eat simple, bland food, you will find enormous taste in it. You know, somebody who comes from the Indian origin, for us, salads are not routine. We are not used to eating salads. But once you stay in the West for a while, you start loving and enjoying salads. In the East, we go to India and eat salads, they say, you are not a cow. Only cows eat grass. Why are you eating grass? They will say, if you go to India and eat salads. But when you learn to eat, when you give it a little time, then you will enjoy that also, isn't it? Similarly, all this sadhana, everything, it may appear very dry and boring from the outside. For somebody who is always indulgent in all these delicacies, he may say, what sort of a person is this? He is not enjoying life at all. They will look at you like that. But if you are enjoying what you are eating, then you feel, this is good enough for me. Because they will never get to the experience of Samadhi, which you will get to easily. Yeah? The greatest joy, your eye should be on the fruit at the tallest branch. Only then you will be able to get to that. Okay? Jai Gurudev. Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramayaha Sarve Bhadradi Pashyantu Ma Kaschidukkha Bhadhavet Loka Samastha Sukhino Bhavantu Loka Samastha Sukhino Bhavantu Loka Samastha Sukhino Bhavantu Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyod Namaha Hari Om
Mm-hmm. <laughs> 